question for African Americans has always been, what is education's purpose? Who controls it? And what is the relationship of education to the broader aspirations of our people? College, founded in 1872, was one of many remarkable HBCUs. A powerful line from Paul Quinn College's alma mater gives purpose to this documentary by demonstrating that education by black people and for black people breaks barriers of white supremacy and racism in education. Paul Quinn College. Historically black colleges and universities helped to break barriers in higher education for African Americans by providing an opportunity to earn college degrees. But who were the builders of these HBCUs and does it matter? When you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him to stand here or go yonder. He'll find his proper place and will stay in it. You do not need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for his special benefit. His education makes it necessary. Carter G. Woodson. The Emancipation Proclamation and the end of the Civil War played a major role in giving African Americans an opportunity to get an education. The first schools for African Americans were started by the American Missionary Association, who felt there was a need to teach black people. But what you might not know is that the AMA was teaching more than reading and writing. The American Missionary Association thought that black people were savages that needed to be taught what was right, which meant learning and embracing white culture. People who understood that if we have control over what goes into their minds, we can keep them under our control. So the integrationists must have been those who understood it, who were anxious to keep blacks away from the best opportunities and all, must have been very happy. Because from the first grade through the 12th grade, not a textbook I had had a black face in it. Not one. Not only did the AMA help to start the first black schools, but they also helped start the first historically black colleges and universities. From the 1860s to 1915, several white organizations such as the AMA, Presbyterian Board of Missionaries for the Freed Man, and the American Baptist Home Mission Society helped to build more than 30 colleges that enrolled over 60% of black students attending college. Colleges like Howard University, Spelman College, Morehouse, Clark Atlanta, Tuskegee, and Southern University. One of many challenges of HBCU started by white people was both injustice and inferior education. The violence that took place at Southern University is an example of these challenges. After weeks of student protesting against inadequate services that led them to marching into the president's office, Governor Edwin Edwards sent 300 police officers to break up the protest. In the end, two 20-year-old students died. No one was ever charged in their death. But were black people able to educate themselves? Black colleges were redefining what it meant to be black in America. You weren't doing something with your hands. You were pursuing a career where education and intellect mattered. It was a protective, insulated environment where they could talk, they could exchange ideas, they could be themselves. And at least for that time period, for those moments, they didn't have to deal squarely with segregation and inequality. My philosophy at this time in life is every ethnic group ought to have institutions that it controls, its people leads. And if other ethnic groups want to come and share in that education, let them come, but let them know that our priority in education here is to prepare black people. That's our first priority. 
but you need to come over here and learn about me so you get the real story. <laughs> you can't get it. You get a you get a filtered perception. The African Methodist Episcopal Church valued education for Black people and by Black people. Education is very important to the AME Church right from our very beginning of 230. Five uh, years ago, uh, when we began as a church, wherever you found you find a church, you find a school. You find a church, you find a school, especially at the time when it was against the law to teach people who were African There were several HBCUs built by the AME Church, one of which was Paul Quinn College. Without a Paul Quinn or without any um, uh, African American college or university, um, they, a lot of people wouldn't have an opportunity to do what they did. Congress officially defines an HBCU as a school established before 1964 whose principal mission was and is the education of black Americans. The education that you can get at a historical black college is second to none. And then life experiences that you get is second to none. Today they enroll only about 10% of all African Americans in the United States, but they account for almost 20% of African American college graduates. The most recent data indicate that HBCUs have a $10.2 billion economic impact on this nation's economy. I want you to think about this for a moment. More than 50% of this nation's black public school teachers and 70% of this nation's black dentists are products of HBCUs. There's a long list of notable people who have attended HBCUs. Presidential candidate Kamala Harris and P. Diddy went to Howard. Martin Luther King Jr. and Spike Lee attended Morehouse. Poet Nikki Giovanni went to Fisk, and Oprah went to Tennessee State. Paul Quinn College helped to break barriers by providing an education that was shaped by black people and for black people. The history of Paul Quinn College is as rich and varied as the refreshing rains of Texas and fertile areas of parched land, where men who tilled the soil sought to eke out a livelihood. Those barren areas of uncultivated forest had a potential of future fertility and the possible yield and abundance of resources. The age of manual labor, of agricultural pursuits, of trading, of economic failures, and poverty-stricken experiences left no doubt in the minds of newly free slaves that to lift themselves out of their depraved condition and to become recognized as useful creatures of God, they must cultivate the art of cultural refinement, acquire academic learning, develop skills in trading, and at the same time fashion their training in the atmosphere which invited the divine blessings of Christ. Those stalwart and dedicated souls of African Methodism, a small group of circuit riding preachers established Paul Quinn College in Austin, Texas in 1872 and Metropolitan AME Church, moving to Waco, Texas in 1877. The Charter of Paul Quinn College was created by an act of the Texas legislature passing the House of Representatives and the Senate. It was approved and filed in the Department of State, May 24, 1881. The AME Church knew that black education was not enough. They saw the importance of education that represented black ideas, black values, and black issues. They sought to address education in a manner that no white organization or individual could. Falkland College is the song of our soul. In the words of M.P. Harvey, I am Falkland College. I am the spirit of my founders, and I am the investment bank for the spiritual, social, and cultural development of you who constantly seek truth and righteousness. I am an institution which gives needed inspiration and guidance to young men and women as they struggle forward and upward for survival. I am the spirit of William Paul Quinn, missionary, educator, and Christian gentleman. I am Paul Quinn College.